We're going to uh, move on. Today's page three pin-up quotes the American philosopher William James on the perils of pessimism whilst wearing a yellow tasseled monokini. Arguably, the debate about the Sun's page three girls has never really gone away. But it has gained some traction over the past week with a sequence of high-profile comedians, politicians, columnists signing a petition to end it. Stephen Smith takes a long, hard look at page three's place in British culture. Less you think about women, the better. Cool, blimey, look at her. <laughs> Where would we be without page three? In a much better place, say many. Beauty Queen shocks council. Lovely Sharon Spencer, 22. She's more than 22, isn't she? <laughs> It's more than 40 years since the first scantily clad model made her bow in the pages of a tabloid. Page 3 is a British institution, but labelled anachronistic this week by Labour's Harriet Harman, who's known by some as Hattie from Camberwell, a moniker she apparently shares with today's Page 3 girl in the sun. The pictures were very glamorous and sophisticated in the early years, says one of the first Page 3 girls. Today, not so much. They are tacky and that they are too obvious and they're probably inappropriate to be in a family household. And I think today's families are very different. You mustn't forget that when, we, when Page 3 started, it was at a time when, you know, the 70s were exploding into free love and, and it was a very um, exciting love piece and, and freedom, free-spirited people floating about the place with flowers in their hair. A current glamour model says page three objectifies women, but in a good way. It is a form of sexual objectification, but any anthropologist will tell you that sexual objectification has been imperative for the survival of the human species, and uh, celebrating sexuality is imperative, and page three is celebrating that. Campaigners against pornography have linked page three pictures to violence against women, but others have seen them as the working man's old masters. The chap that I'm talking about is as likely to enjoy looking at the girl on page three of the sun as his social superiors and intellectual betters as they see themselves are to go to the art gallery and see it having been painted. Today, bluntly, there's a lot more sex about than when page three began. But it's still with us and there's no shortage of young women eager to appear in it. You want to make some photos with me? However, almost 40,000 people have signed a petition urging the Sun to drop it. A campaign celebrated in verse. No more page three. And it makes me so happy that finally, 84 years after winning the right to vote through protest and death, yes, papers might actually start to fill pages with the sagest, almost outrageous words of powerful women, everyday women, whose faces don't need to be pleasing and stomachs don't need to be thin and boobs don't need to be bared. I think it's meant to represent sort of youth and, and, and freshness and it, it celebrates natural beauty. We don't have um, models with, who have had plastic surgery on the page. It's obviously le legal. We're allowed, to, we're allowed to publish those images. And I think it's become quite an innocuous British institution. I am proud of my body, and what I do with it in my spare time is none of the council's business. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't even get planning permission for that, would you? <laughs> Steve Smith um, ending uh, that report. So uh, page three has its knockers, clearly. One person campaigning for decades against it is Harriet Harman. She's here now, joined by the former deputy editor of The Sun, Neil Wallace. Uh, welcome to you both. And Harriet Harman, I wonder how you... Um, feel when you've been on this sort of campaign for what, more than two decades and it doesn't seem to have shifted at all. I mean it is a stalwart and an institution as much today as in the 70s. Well I think so much has changed since the 70s. I think the whole expectation for women of what they can do with their lives and what they can be in their lives and you know, it is just, I think it's really very old fashioned now, very out of date. And I think it was always objectionable, the idea that women are most important as sex objects. But I do just wonder, and perhaps Neil can disappoint me, I do wonder whether or not sometimes they sit down there in the sun and they think, 
should we really pack this in? Is this really sensible? You know, they've got some women now having all sorts of campaigns on domestic violence and childcare. And, you know, why have we got this? I think, but I, I then sometimes wonder whether they think we're not going to be told what to do by a bunch of women. Go on. What happens? What's it for? Um, I, th I think that it's slightly the wrong way around the question now. This is really about, uh, does this matter enough that women are campaigning again about an issue like this, when frankly there's far more important issues oh, come to... come on, that's a cop-out argument. You're here now, let's have the debate. What, what is it for? I mean, quite simply, what does it do for the sun? But I don't believe there's an issue about it really being in debate because nobody really cares as 37,000 women have signed this petition not just women people three million women read the Sun every day they choose to read the Sun every day it's an outdated argument if you like but is it, it an outdated it, the, practice the Sun is uh, page three is a harmless picture that's been there for 40 odd years and real women don't care about it but what purpose does it serve for you? I mean, if it went, would the paper be the worse off? Well, what's the purpose of any picture of an attractive person? It's a nice picture. Picture, it's harmless, uh, it adds a touch of fun to the paper, and why not? If you open any newspaper, I mean, one of the great things I love about broadsheets is that whenever they illustrate a story, it's always a pretty young woman who illustrates the story. You look at city pages in particular. City pages, I guarantee you, you open them every Why day and there's a pretty the girl The city there. pages, I think you'd be fair to recognise, they usually got their clothes on. And, you know, well, it's sometimes. the idea that it's, you know, it's their, it's they've got to have bare breasts and it's for... You know, it's for objectification, and the idea is that women are there to be leered at. Have you ever seen the at. advert for the Wonder Bra? Did you see the advert for the yeah. Wonder Bra and with that woman? And it included a bra, Neil. Say, That's the point. Yeah. It included and it said, a bra. Hello, boys. Mm. What was it selling? On what basis? The truth is, there are many issues. It's a for newspaper. Instance, far you know, more the Sun important, is a newspaper. In the papers this morning, this is full of the stories about how uh, police and social workers have ignored for years the issue about okay. exploitation of children. I mean, now, that's an issue to campaign on. That's an issue uh, to have a petition As about. to be fair, Harriet Harman does campaign uh, on as well. But is there a 40,000 signature if your on it now? Is about is about um, the exploitation of women or how they're seen. There are, there are other British newspapers that have a much more vindictive approach to some of the women that they portray in their papers. It doesn't have to be the sun alone, does it? Yeah, but the Sun, with its, you know, page three women who with o dressed only in their knickers, and the whole point of them is for th none other than for them uh, to, to be leered at as sexual objects. That's the point about it. And, you know, of course, there are a whole load of other issues which are very important, but we're entitled to have our say about of this course. without being accused of not being real women or being vilified for being frumpy old harridans. I mean, that's the other thing. You want your free speech to be able to publish these photos. Well, we want to have our free speech to say, we don't think that's how you should be looking at women in this day and age. I think without being vilified as a result, I should be watching carefully to see. The issue is, there are far more serious issues that the people who have launched this petition putting it in the Guardian, gaining lots of headlines you, for you themselves. Could say, you could say that about anything you wanted. Well. Neil, you've got these good, clean, fun photos in the paper, Monday to Friday. What happens on Saturday and Sunday? Uh, they don't run them. Right, why? Because the, uh, the paper is much more in the house, and so there is much more chance that families will see So, so there's such good, clean it. fun that you don't actually want families to see them? Well, the primar primary readership of The Sun, the seven million adults who read it every day, are adults. Right, but my point is either they're good, clean, innocuous fun and they're part of a British institution, in which case you're, presumably you're not ashamed to have them any day or anywhere, or else you do feel that they're slightly seedy and you don't want them in the house at the weekend. Well, that's fairly fatuous, frankly. I mean, 7.3 million adults 
choose to look at the paper every day. If they take it home or if they don't take it home, that is a decision for them. It is a paper that is aimed at adults. Now, what we are aware of, not that I work there now, but what I know that they're still very much aware of, is the truth is that the paper is very much more family oriented at the weekend. It's much more television and sport oriented. So it's much more around the home. And accordingly, it is quite true they don't have topless women in it. So are you saying, Neil, that you think that there's no doubts or thinking again about this at all? They're absolutely died, you know, died in the wool or you know, they're absolutely going to be sticking to it and they're not even having second thoughts about it, even though we're in the 21st century? I think when you look at what's around in the 21st century, the idea that a 40-odd-year-old institution should fall out because of uh, a, a sort of, if you like, a particular demographic of women have decided they don't like it. Many of those women who don't even read the paper, who are asserting their view over the three million who you keep saying to read it's just it women. Day. It's a lot of men have, have signed the well, petition really, as well. Not. Well, yeah, and quite high-profile people as well. What but would happen? What does high-profile have to do with it? Well, you know, the fact that a bunch of comedians and actresses <laughs> might sign up because they think it's going to get them so some you, brown you've, you've points, the so names what? what? What happens but if... what are they there for, Neil? What are they there for? What are the They're celebrities just, and people no, looking to have what, their what are they moment there of fame for? with this petition? What are they there for with their bare breasts and just in their knickers? They are just there to be leered at, and that is the portrayal of women on page three. with respect, three. Harriet, who are you to say that people can't choose to look at it. Well, I'm, I'm arguing that... Did you that, read today's? Um, <laughs> I didn't, but I, I don't think that Hattie does actually cam come from Campbell anyway. But I'm arguing that women should be respected for what they actually can do in their lives and that girls should be able to have higher aspirations than just looking good with no clothes on. Okay. Surely, we, in the 21st century, what there's more to that, that for a, women. A girl shouldn't have the right to aspire to be a page three girl. Well, I okay. wouldn't call that aspiration. Right. Many Thank do, you very though. 4,000 over the last 40-odd uh, right. years. We're going we're gonna to leave it there. We will take you down to the green room for a drink. We'd love you to stay and discuss. Thank you both very much. Um, have we got...